Thank you, everyone. I'm here to share my story. When I was 15 years old, I saw for the first time Mingi. When one child is killed in my village, in my tribe, and I ask myself, why? Why they kill this child? And I ask my mother, why? And that's the time I start asking myself, why I born in this earth? Why I am here? And I start believing that we all born for reason. But before I take to my story, I'm going to a little bit explain about my area. Omo Valley. Omo Valley is southwest Ethiopia, 400 miles and eight different tribes. And these people are pastoralists. They're herding goats and cattle, and they're, they're farming along the river. And one of these tribes is my tribe. And my family is part of this. This is a Dus. I was born in, du in this village. And this is my parents' heart still uh, it's like this. There is no any kind of civilization. It's really isolated for long, for many years. And the life there is very difficult. I grew up um, in this village. I was sleeping in, in the goat skin and herding goats and herding my father's cattle. So I want to a little bit show how my life journey is. So I was one of these Kara children playing in the dust and you know, playing and you know, going with, with my father for hunting. And my father told me how to be strong. You know, especially my father, always, he's my advisor. And he's, he's pastoralist. He never be in a school. He never know about education means. But he always advised me, Lale, this is really tough area. It's a tough environment. You have to be strong. And always I remember what he told me, to gain respect. You have, you have, you must help the weak and fight the strong. That's my father always telling me. And he, we, we go to hunting with my father when I was seven or nine years old. We go there and he show me how to hunt. When I was nine years old, the missionaries show up in my village and I, they ask for education. Even there is no language in my language education or pen or paper. So they just come and they said, please, can you send your children to school? And which was uh, 65 miles far away from my village. And the missionary just telling the tribes to send their kids, which is far. And my father was there and listening. And he said, he simply believed, he said, I will send my son to school. It's a really big decision. And I went to school 65 miles far away, walking four times a year back and forth, but my school life was difficult. But when I was 15 years old, I came back. What changed my life? What brought me here in front of you is when I was 15 years, I was walking in the village, and I saw for the first time that elders come and grab two years old child, and the child was crying, and the mother was crying. I was standing and looking, watching, and the elder's hand is very strong, and they separated the, ma the child from the mother, and they ran away to the river. And they told the, the family not to cry. And I said, I want to find this. And quickly, I went to my mother, and I asked her, uh, my mother, what's happening to a two-year-old child? And my mother doesn't want to tell me. But I pushed her, I said, I want to know, I want to know. And my mother said, Lale, this is a secret. If I tell you, please, could you keep us a secret? I say, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to know that. <laughs> and then my mother was really uncomfortable to tell me the story. But at the end, she started telling me. She said, Lale, there is a practice called Mingi, means curse. In your tribe and other tribes, three tribes practicing this practice. They think some children, when they're born, when the teeth appear in the bottom, they call teasming, and they drown in the river, they push in the cliff, or they just leave them in the, in the, 
first and the wild animals can eat. When the, child, when the girl is pregnant before the marriage, they declare us mingi. And lale, the hard part is when the mothers, you know, caring for nine months, they know that child is going to be killed. And then they deliver and at the end they kill. And the woman mingi, there is a cultural blessing. If they miss one, still they kill the child. And this is happening. And I was crying and my mother said, by the way, you have two older sisters. Those are killed by Mingi practice. And I was very shocked. And I was crying. And my mother said, don't cry, son. You are going to, soon you're going to kill your child. And your friends is going to kill their child. You have, this is your culture. You have to accept. My, fa- my mother conversation changed my life. And I was not desperate. I was not hopeless. I ask myself, right now, everybody, I want everybody to, to, to be with me with this spirit. Because I was thinking my sisters, and I ask myself, I'm going to solve this problem. I'm going to fix this problem. One day, I will. And that gives me opportunity to go back to school. Even if it's hard or risky, I went to school, and I finished my, my high school. And I asked government, I want to go back to educate my people. I went back, as I said, I'm going to fix this problem. And I went back and I said, for the first time, I stand and I told for my people, for young people especially, before I met the elders, I asked young people, I said, we owe other generation love and care. Not money, not property, love and care. And we have to speak out and say, the mingi is blessing, not curse. We have to change my people's mind. They are not cruel. They are not savage. They are nice people. They have wonderful culture. But we have to say this is bad, and we have to separate the culture and change it. And then in 2008, I started the organization, and I saved these kids. As I said, when I was standing talking about love and care, that time, those children, they never born. But in this picture, you can see that love and care. I give it them because I owe them. Everyone, you owe other generation. Those two things. I saved 37 children with help of Omo Child and my friend John Rowe and my friend Tyler Moore, all my friends in America. There is a resistance in my tribe after I saved the children, this child, was only fed for two weeks, no food. And I told my friends, we have to go. And we went there and we saved. Tinsai, I give new life, resurrection. After that, Tinsai today, she's like that. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. So after I see that, I said, we have to change. Think about one thing. You have a jacket and a t-shirt. You can't remove the t-shirt before jacket. First, you have to remove the jacket and t-shirt. I asked my elders, let me take the children out of the tribe because you believe it's a curse. Let me take out of the tribe and maybe the curse will follow me because that is a jacket. And then later we say we're going to stop the mingi. And then in 2012, last year, I discussed with elders and kings. I said, please, Let's come to the decision. Give me some solution. So we discussed for three months continuously to stop Mingi in my tribe. And at the end, we came to the decision. They say, Lale, we will bring one lamp, and we slow the lamp, it's a sacrification, and that will change the things. So we did in 2012, and six children living in the tribe, and still another tribe practicing, but my tribe ended in 2012. Now we have 37 children. When I see these children, look at their eyes. I see in these children's eyes my sisters. I'm not regret anymore. They are my, my sister's spirit in them. And I told my friends, these children represent my sisters. These children represent the new generation, the future generation. 
Some in school, that's their daily life. This, this is a lunch, and they go to school, they have additional, you know, like supplementary education. It's really beautiful. And I'm really proud of these children. This is a home that we have, family home, that we're operating right now. And this summer, I'm with them. And I said one thing when I was with them. I walk. And I said, I prepare these children for the future. They will be one day to come to the TED Talk here and to share their story. <laughs> that because their story is unique, they have to share that. So I believe in these children. And if you know our organization, please go to the Omo Child and please read about us, know about us. Thank you very much. Thank you.